Hello, Connor here, and welcome back to Battlefront Central, and more importantly, welcome back to my analysis of the Battlefront behind-the-scenes trailer released by DICE at E3 this year. Firstly, I'm going to go over what the narrator said in the trailer in general, just to give people the gist of the trailer and what the narrator was talking about throughout. Then afterwards, I'm going to go and begin the analysis of the trailer, going through as much of the information shown as possible, what we can confirm, what looked cool, and the real progress that DICE Stockholm have made. So let's get straight into it. The narrator, a design director at DICE, starts by explaining that Star Wars belongs to everyone who loves this amazing universe. And he also says that DICE have the opportunity of a lifetime to make the Star Wars game that as fans, we have all dreamt of playing. So this sounds like a good thing guys, it shows us that the DICE developers are passionate about Star Wars and want to make a game that they have dreamt of playing, so all good news for Battlefront. The narrator then announces that, to stay as true to the films as possible, we went back to where it all began, visiting Lucas Archives. Here the Battlefront developers captured the original models and props from the Star Wars movies to be used in the development of Battlefront, confirming that although the game may not follow the plot of the films directly through a campaign or a plot mode, it will follow it by maintaining realism and likeness with the movie. Next the announcer moves on to say, but to immerse players in iconic Star Wars battles will take more than just authentic weapons and vehicles. And this is pretty much where the trailer gets awesome guys. He goes on to say, we went to the original movie locations, not just to capture the environments, but the emotions they invoke as well. The early results are truly spectacular. The DICE developers actually went out to the original filming locations of the six movies. In this trailer they show the DICE developers in a frozen wasteland, obviously the filming location of Hoth in The Empire Strikes Back, and then a dense forest floor, obviously the filming location of the forest moon of Endor, in The Return of the Jedi. The environments look absolutely incredible, and despite being decades since they were filmed, they do still somewhat look the same and bring back classic memories of Star Wars from when I was a child. This just goes to further show the level of commitment that DICE have to maintaining that Battlefront is a classic Star Wars title, and a good addition to the Star Wars universe. They use the experience and emotion gained from these trips to create stunning environments in the engine that they do look absolutely amazing. We have a short series of shots going through the development team and what they're working on, the trailer ends with a rebel soldier on a speeder bike during the battle, showing the Endor map, speeder bike, and even blast of fire in the clip. It all looked absolutely fantastic, and to finish it off, the narrator ended with, We have an experienced team, an extraordinary collaboration with Lucasfilm, and some of the best technology in the industry. And above all, it is our passion for Star Wars that will bring this legacy to life like never before. And as someone once said, do or do not, there is no try. And if anyone here does not know that quote and exactly who said it, they need to brush up on their Star Wars. So overall, the trailer showed nothing but meticulous detail and the dedication of the DICE team. So now let's analyse further and see what we can really glean from this, pertaining to Battlefront. So straight away, at the starting fade-in of the trailer, we see the binary sunset over the DICE Stockholm development studio. Perhaps this is just drawing upon the obvious Star Wars reference of Tatooine, but I would like to think that this is possibly a hint to the Tatooine-based map that's a possibility for Battlefront as well. I'd like to see that map remade in the new game, because it was always a favourite in the previous Battlefronts, and I think if you're going to do Battlefront, you may as well have some of the classic areas. Moving on, we see an Imperial probe droid moving outside the window of the studio. Given the fact that they placed this in the trailer, I would like to think that it would be playable or usable in some form or another in Battlefront. As it's not been in previous Battlefront games, it would be a nice addition to the series. As the narrator describes DICE's opportunity of a lifetime, we see a multitude of models on desks and workspaces around the development studio. This shows us the level of detail that they're working with to recreate the characters as close as possible to the originals. So nothing but good news here for the level of detail to be seen in Battlefront's visuals, which is shown off, although briefly, towards the end of the trailer. Further into the trailer here, as the narrator describes creating a Star Wars game that they've dreamt of playing, we see concept art of a crashed snow speeder and 8080s in the distance and what is obviously half. This confirms that DICE have toyed with the concept of snow speeders and 8080s. The first of which snow speeders we have seen working in engine, however we have not yet seen the 8080s. Although I would imagine it's okay to confirm both of these vehicles for the upcoming Battlefront due to their historical Star Wars importance within the movies, and the importance of them in previous Battlefront games. As we move into the segment within the Lucas archives, we see many objects which possibly being added to Battlefront, including the Death Star, a snow speeder, Stormtrooper's helmet, a multitude of Imperial vehicles such as AT-ATs and ATSTs, and finally R2-D2. R2-D2 is practically confirmed in some form or another, as they even went to the bother of reactivating him for the trailer and photographs. So I would assume they must be using him for the development of the game in some form or another. 
As R2-D2 is such an iconic character, I'm not surprised that DICE would place him within Battlefront. Not just as a selling point, but also to pay homage to possibly the greatest robot character of all time, and arguably one of the most lovable robots of all time as well. Moving on in the trailer, we see that Hoth and Endor are confirmed as areas that the DICE team are adding to Battlefront. As DICE development team visited the original movie locations where The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi were filmed. Right here the narrator states, the early results are truly spectacular. I have to agree completely with this, the visuals they have produced for Battlefront and the incredibly intricate environments they have made look absolutely stunning. Truly spectacular indeed. The trailer then shifts to an amazing scene in which a snow speeder in engine is flying through this large arctic environment of Hoth. So this confirms that snow speeders can actually be flown within the engine, and also that snow speeders are present within the Hoth environment. Following these, we see a developer's screen in which we can see the trenches and fortifications of Hoth that were present during the movies and the previous Battlefront games. This confirms that we'll be able to fight in the trenches, so to speak, and it also confirms the use of turrets within Battlefront, such as the P-Tower and the DF-9. I know you guys don't really know the name of them, so there are pictures up on screen at the moment, and I'm sure you'll realise they are both familiar turrets from the previous Battlefront games and from the movies, so it's good to see that DICE are maintaining some of the original features. During this shot we also hear the sound effects currently produced for the flyby of the Snowspeeder Squadron, although being a bit quiet it did sound amazing. As the narrator says we have an experienced team, we also see a screenshot of a DL-44 blaster. The blaster used by Han Solo in the Star Wars movies, confirming that this will be present in Battlefront, and although being an obvious early alpha stage it still looked pretty decent. Moving on from that, we got an incredible 360 degree turn around a Stormtrooper's helmet, showing the visual detail of his helmet and the sheer level of detailing that has been put into visualising the Stormtrooper within the game. You can even see the small dents and scratches on the armour, just going to show the level of commitment and hard work being put in by DICE. After this we move to another screen, which shows a Stormtrooper crouch walking, so that is an animation that is semi-confirmed for Battlefront. The Stormtrooper is also holding an E-11 blaster, the classic gun that Stormtroopers use, thus confirming this also. In a quick camera pan, we actually get a glimpse of some DICE employees in a lightsaber duel. A lot of people would say this is hinting towards lightsaber dueling, but I'd imagine that's pretty much confirmed given it's Star Wars. But more likely, it's just an easter egg for the trailer and two employees having some fun. Coming towards the end, we see a young developer working on the animations of the ATST vehicles. This moves on to an in-engine shot that looks awesome. And despite the ATSTs having no real colour yet, and obviously very early in development, they do still look pretty damn cool. Especially the detailings of the legs, especially on those ATSTs. There's an incredible amount of sort of. They're obviously not cogs, but you can just see the metal work looks fantastic. In this shot, there's also a stormtrooper that's used for scale, and it just. It really shows the scale and intimidation factor that they're gonna have on the battlefront. The narrator starts to finish by saying that it is the passion of Star Wars that will bring this legacy to life like never before. This moves on to in-engine footage that looks absolutely amazing guys, showing a rebel soldier jumping onto a speeder bike. Remember this is in-engine, so although it may not be possible to yet as a player, that may not be coded in, the engine is still capable of producing this level of detail and maintaining the visuals throughout. This final stage also confirms speeder bikes as a vehicle usable within the game, and states that you will be shot at whilst driving around on them on Endor which isn't really much of a surprise. Finishing off, the narrator ends with, and as someone once said, do or do not, there is no try. This leaves us with the final splash screen, decent amount of information is visible here. Firstly, we have more Battlefront news on its way in spring 2015. So that's very interesting, that's a date for your calendars, so a lot to look forward to then. Secondly, Star Wars Battlefront has an official website, starwarsbattlefront.com, pretty self-explanatory. And finally, Star Wars content produced by EA seems to have a YouTube home on the channel EA Star Wars. So that's it for the behind the scenes trailer, obviously I think it looks absolutely great. DICE's level of commitment and attention to detail and dedication to the Battlefront community has been further reinforced for me. I'm happy to say that all doubt for me about DICE's development of Battlefront has been removed. The early in-engine footage today looked absolutely amazing. It was stunning to see the old environments brought to life in the amazing visuals produced by the Stockholm development team. So what do you guys think about this? It's alright me being amazed, but I'm a pretty hardcore fan. I'm, I sort of expect myself to now. I want to know what you gamers and longtime Battlefront fans think about this trailer. I've seen a lot of comments saying that it was too short, something I, I personally disagree with. However, in a bit of retrospect here, I would like to have seen a bit more about Battlefront. Leave what you think in the comments below. This was my first ever analysis, so I'm sorry if there are any issues or problems with it. That's all for today, if you enjoyed the analysis a like is very much appreciated, I pulled an all-nighter to ensure it's prompt release for you guys, following the release of Battlefront Behind the Scenes, 
now I'm definitely going to catch up on some well-earned sleep. So if you want the latest Battlefront news, updates, information and content released by DICE, then feel free to subscribe to this channel. We'll be following Star Wars Battlefront up until release, and even then, I'll continue if there's a sequel. So feel free to subscribe to keep up to date on the latest Battlefront news. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next update. Also, as someone once said, when making an analysis, do or do not, there is no try.